Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Team pick.
10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Silencer. Radiant team pick. Hello friends, welcome to Season 8 of the Amateur Dota 2 League. My name is Sub-Zero, representing New Meta Media tonight, along with our stats man, Armpit. I apologize as I'm in the midst of a cold, unfortunately, and uh, so if there's any odd sounds, just uh, take your bottled anger out on the common cold. It's been a quick transition week for us here uh, at New Meta Media. Just finishing off Season 7 last week, and uh, yeah, it's really great to be a part of Season 8 now, and... We're ready to bounce right back in the middle of things. So after a hard-fought series uh, in the semis last season, Team Welfare are back tonight against the debut of Team Daedalus. Um, unfortunately, I know very little about Team Daedalus, so uh, I'm actually really excited to see what we have in store for them. And uh, as for Welfare, you know, can't wait to follow them through another amazing season for sure, uh, following up on Season 8. Um, just a heads up, uh, by the way, tonight and quite possibly in future games, there will not be a... This is not a ticketed event, as Valve has kind of been unresponsive for the Amateur Dota 2 League, and Season 8 doesn't have a ticket yet, so this will be an, a, an exclusive map, uh, match privilege, so tune in for that, and uh, I'm pretty excited to have the exclusive rights, obviously. So uh, right, right out the bat, we see uh, Team Daedalus banning out the Timbersaw and the Ogre, and now, you know, those two, pick, two bands aren't really a part of the meta. Uh, I mean, Ogre was really strong in the last couple patches, but uh, as I said before, I haven't really seen much of them, so I can't really say as to what they're going to be kind of picking or banning. It, it could be just a respect ban, as we've seen Geo play in Ogre uh, many a times before, uh, but their picks are definitely part of this patch. Gyro being picked up, as well as the Spirit Breaker, so right there for them, that's obviously some great carry, obviously some great initiation, and right now Gyro is just so strong with whether he's leveling up Rocket Barrage or the Homing Missile, it's really difficult to kind of, you know, be able to take him down if he just kind of stands in the back and farms up, most likely in the safe lane. Uh, and if he's tossing out homing missiles, it's it's really hard to get the jump on him because you're already so low and you just you just can't initiate. Uh, with Team Welfare obviously pick, picking up a silencer and Magnus, I mean, we've seen a lot of silencer come out from Team Welfare. It's a pick that they usually, it's their go-to, uh, as well as a ban. Just they don't like to kind of mess around with it when they build their team fight lineups. Uh, Undying being banned out, as well as the Night Stalker, so, you know, usual bans from them. I'm Undying being such a strong hero as it is through last several patches. And uh, Night Stalker, you know, with that mid-game, it, it's hard to kind of crunch him down and be able to take uh, control of the mid-game uh, if you're facing off with him, because he blows off his ult and just starts chasing down and gets hero after hero for the kills and stacks up, and then, you know, it looks to towers and on and on, and it's just difficult to deal with him. So it's obviously uh, noticeable to see that being banned out. And, you know, it's definitely going to be an interesting game. I mean, for the most part, we've seen Welfare play a lot of uh, kind of the same lineups. They surprised, surprised us a little bit in the playoff series uh, with a couple of pickups. Um, normally, it's Turgul play, playing mid for them with their stand in this time uh, running on Jeff. However, with Kiko, they did have him running an Invoker, which was really interesting, as well as a Brewmaster. Uh, so they are able to rotate their lineup a little bit to kind of you know, play the field and see how things go, and they've won with it in the past. Uh, but they are going back to the roots with the Silencer uh, and the Magnus. We don't see Magnus too much, but, you know, it's it's still a great hero to pick up, especially with buffs and the team fight. And it, it is just a strong hero, so if Silencer gets off a huge ult, Magnus jumping in with a Blink Dagger RP, uh, try and get off a huge 3-man RP, push them all back. It'd be interesting to see what they kind of go for here, as they've picked up the Earthshaker in the past, they've picked up an Axe, and that's that's all great team fight with the Magnus combo, but it's not a lot of late game potential. Um, usually they pick up the Phantom Assassin though, and throw it on the Kiko, but with, like I said, Turgul being out this match for their mid, uh, it's really going to be interesting to see what they pick up. Storm Spirit being banned out, as well as the Omni Knight for Welfare, and... You know, Storm's just such a strong mid as it is right off the bat, and uh, he kind of dominates the lane early uh, if he's against a melee hero. He's not the greatest, uh, but as soon as he hits his 6, he can just jump around, start ganking, uh, even take out the mid. So, great ban from that. Omni Knight is something they definitely don't want to see with them running so much magic damage. 
they do pick up a carry on Juggernaut, so it's it's good to see a little bit more, you know, right-clicking carry, as well as his ult is obviously the physical damage, so uh, they're definitely not lacking any of that anymore, and, you know, if they, they, if they continue down this road, they might need a couple more stuns here, you know, pick up that Earthshaker. Uh, Geo has run the Silencer before, but I think also it's been Sinister running on that, so... Uh, keep an eye out here for Lion also being picked up. I mean, Lion's a strong hero as it is, gets out the stun. He also has the uh, Disable turning them into a frog or fish, and who can forget the Finger of Death, so... I mean, it's it's so much potential team fight with them in this current lineup. But hang on here, Team Daedalus picking up a Faceless Void, so... Chronosphere is going to be huge to kind of take away any solid team fight from Welfare if they want to, you know, reinitiate into a team fight. The silence will be kind of delaying any sort sort of response for a moment, for a couple seconds. But if Void gets off a good Chrono, in combination with a Gyrocopter, I mean, it's going to be really tough to face up against. A Chronosphere can really make or break a team fight half the time, and it's definitely going to be something to look out for here could be a Midas Void and they want to go for the late game because right now Welfare doesn't quite have it. It's more of a mid-game lineup and with the Quap being picked up now it's it's really based on team fight. And like I said we've seen it in the past a lot of team fight for Welfare but the Chrono is going to be scary against it if he jumps in and locks even two or three and that that's a lot of the team fight that's going to be negligible and now that Necro's picked up that's some more sustain uh, as well as Necro's alt taking out any of their, whether it's a carry or their teamfight initiators as Silencer and Magnus to really get off a good alt, it's it's going to be a hard fight one. Uh, that being said, I've seen Welfare really group together and bring back so many games, and they've ruled over a lot of teams. Uh, just that unfortunate kind of, unfortunate couple team fights in the semifinals for them. I remember it being a Magnus that actually took them out, so it could be a little bit of practicing that they've caught up with the Magnus pick here. And, uh, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. Getting back to the draft, though, I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a carry sort of game. It's already, that's four cores that, even if it is a Necro support, which I'm going to guess it is, that Necro can still turn into such a great core in the late. And it's, it, it's so much sustain with the Death Pulse just healing up everybody and, you know, doing damage to the other team. And I've said it before, the ult is really going to wipe them out. Uh, Bristle being banned, so they don't want to see any more uh, tank because Spirit Breaker himself turns into quite a good tank late game, and it's really hard to take him out. While that time, you got a Void jumping around, right clicking, Gyro doing a ton of damage, and the Necro really keeping the team alive. So, uh, Abaddon, that's another tank coming out, and that's a really tanky lineup for Daedalus. Really interesting to see for sure. And, I mean,. It, disruptor pickup is going to do a lot of work for them as well. If they can, if Geo is able to throw in a great disruption, uh, as well as a static storm, he can really pull out the void from his chrono because he just won't want to stay in that. Uh, as well as gyrocopter, if he locks him in, that's a lot of the carry gone. Um, so it's a great pickup to see the disruptor. We haven't seen it before in the past from from Geo picking up or Team Welfare at all for that matter. So really going to be an interesting lineup. So we'll start off with Team Daedalus up top. We have Ghost running on the support Abaddon. We have Arunian on the Necrophos. Triple B67 on the Spirit Breaker. I'm Bad Kill Me on the Faceless Void. And Laser Phaser on the Gyrocopter. For Team Welfare, we have the stand in My Name Jeff on the Juggernaut running bottom. With Caesar on the Silencer this time. We have Sinister going mid on the Quap. Geo coming in with the Disruptor support. And off lane we have Kiko running the Magnus, so a little bit of interesting shakeup of the lineup, and it's going to be an interesting fight for sure. Lots of team fight coming out from both teams, and I'm really looking forward to this match for sure. And uh, I, you know, I can't wait to see what happens here. Right down on bottom, all right off the bat here, Laser Phaser kind of zoning out, but he doesn't know Jeff's up there. And I'm bad. Kill me's also here, so Jeff might actually want to get out. Juggernaut's not going to be able to line up against these two, but Sinister does come in, throws off the dagger on Laser Phaser, and Battle Fury comes out. So damage actually being done, and this is going to be first blood for Jeff on Laser Phaser, and couple of hits back and forth. But I think Welfare is just going to be happy taking that one, and uh, yeah, a little early gold for Jeff. Great pickup on the Gyro for sure, and they're going to be able to secure this room up top. Kiko playing pretty dangerous here with 67 as well as a Arunian. 67 throws off the charge, gets the stun, but I think they're just going to zone him up here and be happy to take up that bounty rune up top. 
So as I said before, lane's going to be Juggernaut, Disruptor, as well as the Silencer. And that's really going to be difficult against with a Void and the Abaddon. I mean, Abaddon's great in uh, tanking all, especially he's just going to keep throwing the shield on Void. Uh, but until he gets a 6, it's definitely going to be difficult for him. He doesn't have a ton of mana. And with the First Blood going to Welfare, he's already lost over half of his mana pool. So it's going to be a difficult lane uh, in this tri lane. Mid, we have Laser Phaser uh, against Sinister here. And, you know, I think Sinister's probably going to take control of this early. Uh, he tends to level up the dagger on the co-op, um, as most people do running mid. Uh, and it's just... It's so destructive. You push anybody out on mid, whether it's somebody tanky, uh, especially it works really good against Shadow Fiend. So, I mean, Gyro's not the tankiest of heroes, and he's only picked up a salve and uh, just Blades of Attack. So he wants to pick up a couple more last hits, but... I feel that Sinister is actually going to be able to kind of zone him out uh, had he keep if he keeps leveling the Shadow Strike. Up top, Kiko's not going to get a ton of this, but still staying in uh, XP range against 67 and Arunian. And, you know, it's going to be really hard because he's going to get zoned out from this Necro. That D-Gen is just real tough business to go up against, and Magnus alone just does not have enough hit points to, you know, stay, stay in lane half the time. And he's probably going to be forced to get this uh, early bottle, and can't uh, rush the early blink but you know it's it's okay he needs to sustain magnus is really a hero that only needs the blink as long as he has hero uh, levels sorry i mean you get that rp and the whole game changes you start ganking you can jump on pretty much anybody you want uh, whether it be a solo lane as well you get the skewer into the tower and that's that could be a quick early pickup kill for you um but necro is just really gonna zone him out either way and uh heartstopper or just it's just so strong against anybody in the solo lane and should be uh, Triple B getting a ton of farm here from on the Spear Breaker. Back and forth here, Sinister and Laser Phaser just trading hits back and uh, Shadow Strike going on, bringing them Gyro almost to half health and you know it's it's going to be uh, kind of a back and forth lane as I said before. It's not a lot going to be tossed out early on just because you know Quap doesn't have that much damage. She actually elects to go into Scream of Pain and so she's going to look to farm a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be hard to catch out Laser Phaser. Just with the Scream, she's going to probably just stick to the farm. It's not really much else she can do here. And actually, I think I missed a kill there. Yeah, it was Silencer actually picking up the Void on bottom, so, you know, great kill for there, and that's Void being taken down, as well as Gyro in, in first, and <laughs> I missed another one. Quap taking down the Gyro on mid, so that's two deaths for Gyro, and, uh, yeah, it's it's not looking great, and uh, definitely going to be difficult lineup uh, if this keeps happening. Taking out their two big cores, uh, Void with a Chronosphere. So if you can't get the levels early to get that six, they are lacking the team fight response to go against this heavy team fight welfare team. And even though it is a tri lane, they're they're doing quite good here. XP definitely in the range, uh, almost in one k in welfare's position. So uh, Jug's doing a. Doing a lot of good farming here, and, you know, Geo just kind of playing playing his own support. I mean, let's talk about Geo for a minute here. I've seen so many games with him just, you know, taking the team on his shoulders, really running as the captain of Welfare, and, uh, you know, he plays support every game. You never see him with really any core items, and, uh, you know, he really holds this group together, making it to the semifinals, and, uh, yeah, I mean... Lots of training going into that for sure, even though it is an amateur tournament. And it looks like they're going to go on Ghost. Silencer throwing out the last word, as well as the spin, and Juggernaut does pick up the kill onto Ghost. And we do see a disruption coming, or, uh, sorry, the <laughs> the glimpse coming back on the Void. And I'm bad at Kill Me is running pretty low here, gets stuck in the kinetic field. And this is going to be a dead Void. Caesar picking up... Uh, was Geo picking up that kill on the, on the disruption, so... Yeah, that's, that's two more kills, and this tri lane is really proving to be quite a bonus for them. I mean, it's it's hard to get a Juggernaut really online without any levels, but give him some farming room, and he's going to come online just fine. Caesar is already going to be picking up points. He's already stolen four intelligence, and, you know, these two heroes aren't really full of a whole lot of mana. I'm bad of kill me on Void is, is struggling, just sitting at 200 mana, already getting stolen. And, you know, Ghost on Abaddon is just... It's a struggle because he's playing the support. He's throwing out the shield constantly on I'm Bad Kill Me just so he doesn't go down. Uh, even though he did just just as we saw, but he's just going to have a real tough time. And, you know, throwing out the mist coils just as harass, it, it's just not worth it. 
and Disruptor rotating up top, picking up Laser Phaser. That's three times that Gyro's gone down. And they're going to keep going on Triple B. Don't think they're going to get this kill as you can charge away from anything. But right now, 6-0 and for Welfare. And a lot of gold going their way. We already see increase almost at 3k for Welfare. So they're farming quite well in the Jug. And, you know, Quap doing quite well. She's only at 8-5. and five, So, you know, playing pretty tight with this uh, Gyro. They... You know, I haven't got a lot of lane dominance. I think it's been a lot of back and forth between this. And he does throw out the missile, so it will chase her back quite a bit. It's uh, it's only a level 2 missile, so not going to do a ton of damage. But, you know, it's enough to force her back. And she might actually have to hit the fountain with no bottle charges. And it looks like uh, Caesar's going to stay alone here with Jeff. And just start to give him a little bit more XP. And they've rotated this disruptor around. They did pick off that kill on Laser Phaser uh, in that... In that river spot, they did have it warded, so definitely easy pickoff. But yeah, both both wards stacked here, so they should have seen that one coming. Gyro just going to start pushing this mid tower with you know, Quap being forced back, but not going to be able to get too much damage off. He's not the greatest hero early on. Can toss out the missile as I talked about in the draft, but uh, yeah, it just not going to be able to get a lot of damage on top for that Quap and Sinister rotating down bottom. Manages to pick off Ghost here, Abaddon dying again, so this trialing really taking full force here, and they, <laughs> Void just can't really get any farm for this, he's only sitting at 8-2, and two. Abaddon picking up a couple last hits too, maybe when that Void died, but I mean, they're, they're trading it, and it, it's two cores that can't really trade last hits right now, I mean, Abaddon can normally in a, just a, kind of a pushy, off lane, but it's going to be difficult. Laser Phaser coming in, and Caesar kind of standing there. Don't know if he was AFK, but he's sitting pretty low, and they do manage to pick off an, a kill here, so they get one back in the favor of Daedalus, and Void manages to pick up that little bit of extra gold, and it's exactly what they needed. Sitting pretty low here, and I mean, Gyro's here, but they both have no mana, and they got to watch out. Jeff's almost hitting six here, and when he's solo, that'll be pretty quick. They do rotate Ghost back down, so they're going to just continue to stay in this lane, and you know what, they haven't got a lot of farm, which is really unfortunate for the Void, but they're sitting pretty good in levels. I mean, they're both at level 5, almost hitting up their 6, and against this Tri-Lane, none of, they're all sitting at 5 as well, so it's it's going to be an even trade, just not for not for the farm. Jug's already picking up the phase boots, and, you know, sitting at 900 gold, he's, he's had a pretty easy time. Sitting on top of farm here, 31 and 8, you know, doing quite well. Sitting at uh, sitting at the 740 mark. Up top, Kiko actually skewers right in with the RP. Manages to get off a double RP. Sinister following up with the scream. And that will be two uh, two kills up top. Necro and Spearbreaker. So that's a great rotation coming in for Welfare. And Kiko really getting a, getting a lot out of that. Sitting at level 7. Manages to pick up Mana Boots. And yeah, he'll be on his way to a Blink Dagger pretty soon. Geo rotating all over the map. This disruptor, I tell you, he's gonna, it's gonna be difficult. It's a great fifth pick for them, especially for a Chrono from Void. Uh, but they just managed to bring him down just as a, you know, a little support rotate in to pick off two up top. Middle tower, we see three rotating in. We got Caesar, and Viz with Sinister and Kiko, and they're actually gonna go on Laser Phaser. Last word thrown out, as well as another dagger, and yeah, this is gonna be a dead gyro. Sounds are picking up the kill here and. The stacks on top of Caesar right now. Already stolen six intelligence on a trialing support here for Caesar, and now he's starting to rotate. He's getting a little ahead of the game here. I mean, he's already got. It's really just a harass piss off si uh, silencer. Three into Curse of the Silent, two in the last word, and yeah, you rotate him in, and that team doesn't have a lot of mana altogether. Necro's really their only intelligence hero. And it's going to be rough for him. He's only sitting at 440, so if they manage to bring down a lot of mana, it's going to be difficult to you know, be able to take off in a really mid-game lineup. Abaddon, Necro, Spearbreaker, these are all mid-game heroes, as well as like if the Void actually gets off some good farm here, and you know Gyro can rotate in and get ganks. They did get that pick off down on bottom on Caesar already, but yeah, without, without major farm and levels, it's going to prove to be difficult to get into any sort of mid-game. But uh, they do have the late game for sure. That being said, Jeff jumping in, expending the alt for the kill on Ghost. And that's a killing spree for the Juggernaut. 300 golden change. And uh, yeah, Chug's doing really well here, sitting at 3 on one Caesar jumping in on Kill Me. And so is Jeff. They're going to throw out some hits, but this isn't going to kill the Void. But it will force him back, sitting at no mana. Uh, tosses out the cell, so he might just chill around for a little bit of XP, but 
I mean, this is going to be difficult for him to farm. He does manage to pick up a 6, but it won't be a chrono for quite some time with no mana. And uh, Ghost doesn't even have a clarity for him. Unfortunate. And the curses are just going to keep coming out here. Back mid, we got rotation in from Abrunian, as well as Triple B and Laser Phaser. So I think they really want to start controlling this mid game. They're going to start rotating people in and... It's really what they need to do. They need to get some sort of control. It's 11-3 and three right now, and it's it's starting to look a little grim for them. It, it really is a mid-game lineup, and as much as I say that, yeah, it's Gyro and, and Void. They have so much late-game potential, but if they keep stacking on top with this Quap and Silencer stealing all that intelligence, they only really have like a one-shot kind of thing for a, any sort of team fight, and uh, it's just proving to be a really tough curve for them in the mid game so uh they might need to you know start pushing towers get a little bit of gold right now they're sitting a little bit of a deficit here on gold um i mean jugs is really taking control of his farm and it's really only yeah it's really only the spear breaker that has any sort of farm on this team he's already picked up an urn and yeah it has finished his power treads so it great for triple b if he can start ganking this will definitely prove to be a lot better of a game for them in the mid and uh you know, if he's able to get off a charge, they see Kiko here for sure. Abrunian kind of running away from him, but he does have a headdress, so he is a little bit tankier and going to be able to stay alive. But Sinister does jump in, blinks in, throws off the Shadow Strike, and Kiko's going to look for the Skewer. Maybe even the RP with Triple B coming in. Skewer tosses off Chiro coming in from behind and throws off the cooldown, and that's going to be two pickups. They do manage to take down the Necro, but this is exactly what they needed. That's two big kills, Magnus as well as the Quap. And uh, quap has gone down twice, but that is the first kill on a really level magnus so that's a great pickup for these two and lots of gold expended for sure i mean laser phaser uh on his way to a helm already has it and he's gonna start doing some more damage here really good gank really good rotate as well as the spirit breaker coming in he didn't do a whole lot just threw off a charge but that's exactly what they needed they just needed that little bit of a stun and uh he might just go mask of madness and really start to gank as i said before so uh, great great pickup for him for sure and they're really gonna have to give some control to this void though just the power treads and only sitting at 250 gold with nothing on the way <laughs> it's rough I, i've been in this position i mean a farming void that can't get any farm is definitely difficult and ghost being glimpsed back this is going to be another kill for them sounds are picking up another one so that's eight stacks and triple b actually diving deep in on the magnus so picks up another kill and he's actually on a killing spree, so look out. Here comes the mid game. And as much as I kind of harped on it before and it wasn't working, Spirit Breaker manages to start throwing off some really good charges and gets off a couple quick kills. And, you know, they could look to look to see them go bottom. Sinister activating a haste rune. He's going to start dancing around, but doesn't have his ult for another 50 seconds. And it's going to prove difficult to really do anything. They throw out a Shadow Strike on, ba on Bad Kill Me. And Kinetic Field being dropped, Abrunian's most likely dead, Static Storm coming out just as a sure measure, and Quap picking up the kill with Scream of Pain. And, uh, yeah, it's gonna be hard without the Necrophos. I mean, that's the real sustain, but it is Gyrocopter taking out the killing spree of Jug. I'm not sure where that was. Where is Gyro? It must have been on the bottom. That's a huge pickup for Laser Phaser. Really good. I mean, he's sitting at level 9 now, and... That's that's right in stand with the Queen of Pain. I mean, Sinister's had a pretty good early game. She's only went down twice, but has picked up a couple assists as well as kills of her own. And Laser Phaser really needed to do something to get back into this one, so watch out for him. It'll be interesting to see what he goes for. I mean, a Mantis style would be great for this because they need some sort of survivability. And right as I say that, jumps right on top. Spirit Breaker going for the silencer. Gets Glimpse back, but he will manage to bring him down with the Urn Charge. And uh, that's a big pickup as well. That silencer's been really taking attack. control of this whole team fight package i mean throwing out the crystal sound getting rid of any sort of mana really hinders any sort of team fight from daedalus so great pick up there sinister rotating down on bottom here with a co-op and just kind of you know protecting the jug i think from the farm he's uh now has gone into the jungle he has picked up his mask of mana so also has the blade of alacrity uh it could be a yasha right off the get-go I don't think he wants to go for Agnum Scepter yet. I mean, the team fight's great, and that's really what they built their lineup around, but I think they need a little bit more than that. And Abaddon diving deep. There is five rotating on bottom, and they do manage to bring down Sinister on the co-op. And, you know, that's, it's going to happen. She didn't have a ton of mana left. And, uh, yeah, these are great return kills, and all of a sudden it's 14-9. and nine. And just like that, big swing here coming back, and XP almost dropping back to zero, and 
So is gold. I mean, Welfare have a little bit of a lead in the early game, but things are starting to even out. And with this mid-game lineup coming from Daedalus, watch out for them to come right back into this one. Arunian's going to step in right onto Jeff and Geo, and look out, buddy. He's still got his ult. And he manages... Oh, they do get off the glimpse here from Geo. And Chrono actually being expended. Silence coming out from the back. And I'm bad at kill me. He's going really hard on Jeff. Disruptor going, uh, taking down the Necrophos. And here comes Sinister on the back. Doesn't have his ult, but throws out the Shadow Strike. And I'm bad by kill me. Does not have enough mana to jump away. And this is going to be a dead void. Ghost being stuck here. Not going to be able to get out, but does have his ult right back up. And Spirit Breaker is going to be charging all the way from the other side of the map. I think it's a little too little too late. And Kiko's actually going to jump on top of Ghost here. Still does have his ult. And Laser Phaser coming from the jungle too and throws out his. Misses on both though. And oh god, huge, great RP. And uh, that's going to be a dead Abaddon. And Laser Phaser getting really low. And Magnus does manage to pick up the killing spree on Gyro. And Spearbreaker still jumping in. He does have his ult. Gets glimpsed. Oh, <laughs> hits the ult on Sinister. Brings him so low. But the glimpse threw him all the way back to the Rosh Pit. Oh, just unfortunate for him. Triple B just... <laughs> probably showing his mean face right now just not happy about that one and Geo really needs to get out of here this is a full Arunian as well as I'm bad I'm kill me but he's just gonna TP back home and great play to get out Necrophos probably going for this early mech and they really do need the sustain they have come back a little bit on these team fights but that being said it it's really back and forth because Void is running really low he hasn't had enough farm yet and doesn't have any sort of tank Ghost is even being taken down and he already has his ult um, it's really just the Spirit Breaker that's really tanking up most of this damage and being able to survive. Now that he has the Urn and Mask of Madness, that gives him a lot more survivability. So if they do add on top of that with the Necrophos uh, getting the mech, it's, it's going to be really hard to take them down. So great pickup for him. And Jeff does get the Yasha, so this will be most likely a Mantis style. It could be a Sanjin Yasha, but even if he does build that, that will be a late game Mantis style just to get a little bit of more push. They don't have a ton of it, really. Yeah, I mean, it's... What do they have? Shockwave. Scream. And Quap actually jumps in, throws off her ult, and Ghost pops his right off it. And Laser Phase are going down really quick. So is Jeff, though, and Rocket goes out. This is going to be a kill for Abaddon on Juggernaut. Silence coming out, and I'm bad I'm kill me is running really low. Still has his Chrono, hasn't used it, and does pop it off. There is no more disruption, and he's going to turn right on top of Sinister, but he's running so low. He does time walk away, manages to dodge a little bit from Caesar. And Spirit Breaker charging mid and picking off Kiko. They're going to chase him, bad him, kill me. And he does not have any more mana. So Sinister picking up this regen rune. Yeah, this will be a kill on the void. Spirit Breaker charging in, but all they need is... Yeah, there goes the disruption. And uh, yeah, that's that's a dead void. Triple B, though. Really tanky. He's going to go hard on top of Sinister. Running pretty low, but it will be the Spirit Breaker that falls first with Caesar rotating in. Great rotation for sure. And uh, yeah, that's a two for two trade. Spirit Breaker and void going down and... Kiko alone on mid. This is Spirit Breaker's. This is Spirit Breaker's time. I mean, this is when he really needs to focus mid, and uh, charge hard on this Kiko before he does manage to get his blink dagger. Because it was pretty. Actually, it might be on the courier. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it does. So he did manage to get it just in time. He didn't have much gold left, so bought it just before he died. Great pickup for him, and that's really going to start to change things. Does have the level two RP already, and. You know, Spirit Breaker needs to stay on top of these kills, but it might be just too little too late. They've given so much farm, and there's really nothing they could do. I mean, it's such a harass sort of lane in that tri lane on bottom. They're going to be able to pick up this mid tower. Could be a deny coming from Kiko, and it will be. It does get managed to get off the deny, so a little bit less gold. And Sinister jumping in, throws off the Shadow Strike, but Laser Phaser throwing off his ult, and Kiko running really low. Doesn't elects not to throw the RP, which is probably a smart move, and takes the death instead, and Sinister jumps out. Jeff... Just taking the Ancients. He needs to get out of there, buddy. Spear Breaker charging in, but it's going to be li too little too late. Four running around the river here for Daedalus. And, you know, this is a great game. A lot of back and forth. A lot of, a lot of great action. Team fights and pickoffs, ganks, all the like. It, it's really great to see, especially the start of Season 8. Lots to look forward to. Lots to come. And, you know, you're going to see a lot more Gyro, I believe. And even into the International, you're probably going to see Gyro again. And it's, you know, it's been about two years since he was really picked up a ton. And, I'm glad he's back. He's he's a great hero to watch, and you know he is the divine carrier. So look out for that for sure in future matches. Spirit Breaker jumping in here, wanting to go on top, but it is uh, Silencer Caesar TPing right out. 
you know, he's just going to jump off. Does pick up a Javelin, so this could be an early MKB, which would be really great against this Juggernaut. Getting any sort of mini bash on him. He's not the tankiest hero until he starts to get that Butterfly, or if he does go Scotty build. Uh, even with the Scepter, obviously, Aghanim Scepter. Um, but if he does get the uh, MKB on Spirit Breaker, watch out for that, because Spirit Breaker can turn into a carry himself. Sounds being expended. Throws out the Scream from Quap, and they're going to start to chase down the Spirit Breaker. Gets caught in the Kinetic Field, and Laser Phaser throws down the Call Down just to keep them at bay. Static Storm coming up from Geo, and Spirit Breaker running low. So close, and Quap does blink ahead and picks off the kill. So, a uh, <laughs> little gank here on mid, picking off that Spirit Breaker. And it's a little cool down here for this Call Down, but, I mean, Laser Phaser just not being able to get anything done. Gets Glimpse back just a tad, and he's running really low. Juggernaut throwing out the alt, but... <laughs> Oh, a waste. Nah, not really a waste at all, but it jumps back to creeps, only gets a couple hits on that gyro, but it is Silencer managing to pick up the last bits of that kill, and uh, Spirit Breaker actually falling there too, and <laughs> left, right, and center, there's so many kills on the map, and I apologize, I can't get every one of them here, but uh, yeah, it's, it's great action, and Jeff is just going to start picking at this mid tower, and what does he have flying in here? Yeah, no, it's Sinister actually picking up an eggs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. Like, this team is just going to start to roll. And it once he gets eggs online, he's only a couple pieces away. This Quap is really going to start to ball out of control. And Geo doing so much work here. Does have the mech. That's a lot of heal up. Now with the healing ward coming out from Jugs. And they just have carry and team fight and now sustain of their own. Necro just not able to keep hold of the sustain for their team. And still only has the headdress, hasn't completed boots or anything either. Uh, I mean, he's getting close to the mech, but it's it might just be too little too late. Welfare does head into the Rosh Pit, and I think the, I think Team Daedalus knows what's up here. They do have the ward, and they do spot out Caesar. RP going out on two, Laser Phaser running really low. Chrono coming out, and he's going hard on top of Geo. But the mech does come and saves his life. Gets a dominating streak on Caesar, taking out the gyro. But the all comes out from Necrophos, manages to pick up Geo, and Magnus going down as well. So that's a two for two trade. Spirit Breaker being cleaned up too uh, from Juggernaut. And they're going to go right back into the Rosh Pit. I mean, he is half health, so this would be a great pickoff, but I'm bad at kill me. He's running really low. He can't even time walk out. They need to be really careful, and Necro is not... He doesn't have a lot of mana left. He can't hold in the sustain. Sinister comes right back in with an alt. The silence does go off, does pick off the void, and Arunian will go down. Ghost throws out the alt, so he heals up a bit, but they're going to be able to chase down this kill. Throws out the shield, but is not going to be able to last much longer. Jug's throwing off the classic Omni Slash and just destroys him. So that will be a team wipe only for two for Welfare. And, you know, the swing is just going to start to jump right back. We're sitting at around... 800 8,000 sorry in XP and another 8,000 in gold and uh, you know we're gonna take a look at net worth and Jugs is gonna after this roast take above 10k as, and with a quap right behind here at 7600 it's really just a spear breaker that's really done all the work for the kills I'm what else do they have I mean great chrono that he picked off I believe it was three there but just no follow-up damage just not able to get anything done after that and spear breaker getting six kills and Void stuck with 1 and 5, it just bit, has not been able to get any sort of farm, and sitting the lowest on his team for XP, it's going to be difficult for him for sure. Uh, so they do put the Aegis on the Juggernaut, and Quap does finally pick up the Aghanim Scepter, so that's going to be even more damage for her, and just with the with the cooldown being just 40 seconds, she can jump into a team fight, try and survive, blink out, and then run right back in if it delays any further and sort of chase down kills. And, you know, she's going to start probably going for a mana item. She has the Null Tally. I don't think she's going to build into Dagon. It's not really worth it uh, with this sort of tankier lineup, even though they haven't got a lot. Spirit Breaker does pick up a kill on Caesar up top. Uh, but, yeah, they don't have a lot, They, but they can tank up. It, Spirit Breaker already sitting at 15 health points, and Necro will eventually come online for a little bit of heals. He will eventually get the mech, and, you know, with the Death Pulse, it's really tough to kind of start pushing into a Necrophos lineup. And uh, well, Spearbreaker throwing off the charge there. And does get the Quap. Sinister activating the double damage rune. You know, he's, he's running low on mana. Quap does blink out. And he's going to want to chase down this kill. He will spot her out with a the little bit of vision here. And Quap wants to jump away, but charges up. He doesn't use it. That was a kill for you, buddy. Regeneration. Ah, Triple B. You're so ahead. All you needed to do was charge. 
But Sinister does get away, and Lucky for sure does pick up that regen. And down on bottom, we're going to see a little bit of action most likely. We've got three in the jungle, and they're going to want to go hard on Jeff, but it is RP coming out in the back, picking off Laser Phaser as well as Ghost. Silencer throwing off the ult, and Jugs expending his. Static Storm coming down, Ghost being healed up, cracked off his ult, but they will be able to chase down. This should be two kills. Glimpse going off in a Runeon, and he's going to want to TP out, but... They do get manage to get the kill, and that's a killing spree for the co-op. Spearbreaker coming in from across the map does manage to get off an ult on Jeff. But that will be a dead spirit breaker. And that's a dominating streak for the Juggernaut. My goodness. <laughs> that's three for nil. And they're gonna start to chase down Ghost. He does not have his ult anymore. And yeah, there's just Blink Dagger coming out from Kiko. And Blink coming out from Sinister. And this will be a free kill for Goat on top Ghost. And there's nothing that he can do about that one. <laughs> He's gonna get chased down. Void is in no shape to come and save him. Even with the Chrono, doesn't even use it. He has nothing. He has a Mask of Madness and Power Trends. There's no damage. He just cannot even survive in his own Chrono if he, unless he gets all five. It's just too difficult for him to even jump on anybody for a kill. And this will be a tower for Juggernaut manages to get the last hit there. Age is going to be reclaimed in two minutes here, so they're feeling pretty ballsy. They might want to get a real great play here, get another team fight, or perhaps just start taking out towers. They haven't managed to take out any on top yet, so look out for that push next. Ping's coming out, and Geo is a little deep. He does have arcade boots, so this... Oh man, that is going to be a Guardian Greaves coming out pretty soon. And he does get the Staff of Wizardry, so this will be for a Forest Staff, which is definitely a great support item. I mean, if they get caught in the Chrono or anything, uh, or Gyro's ult, uh, Forest Staff's a great item to have, but... You know, once once he get those Guardian Greaves, they're going to be even tankier. And, you know, Triple B picking up a kill on Caesar there, but... He will go down to the Magnus uh, over, or Shockwave, sorry, and Ghost being picked off. Does crack off the ult here, and they're just going to kind of tiptoe around him until it expires. And, oh my goodness, the Sonic Wave being spent just to finish him off. It will be Magnus that picks that one. And Gyro, interesting to come up in the back from the trees there. He, he knew that the whole team was there for welfare. And Jeff's just going to turn right around, throw the Omni Slash, and... Aegis is going to be expiring here pretty soon. He's sitting at 3,300 gold. And, oh no, Arunian, you've been found. You've been spotted. Last minute skewer manages to throw off the TP. And Juggernaut will pick up another kill. And they're really starting to ball out of control. Uh, Jeff, the stand-in, really filling in for Turglo well. I mean, Turglo's usually the one that gets most of the kills. But he's sitting at 10, 2, and 10. Really great game for him. He's He had just all the time to farm and bottom, so... It's, it's not only a credit to him to picking off so many kills, it's really a credit to his supports, giving him such an easy time. And that will be another kill for Disruptor, taking out the Void. And this is looking pretty grim for Team Daedalus in Game 1 here. But yeah, really, I, you know, right now, real big credit to Caesar. He's stolen so much intelligence from Team Daedalus that they really haven't been able to do anything. And Silence Salt coming out again just like that is, has been really great follow-up. And Kiko getting a huge RP on 3. That will be a double kill for the Juggernaut, picking off Laser Phaser as well as Triple B. Glimpse coming back, Ghost no longer having the ult. That will be another kill. Kiko throwing out the skewer on nobody because they've already blown him up. And that's a mid-rax. And, you know, this is looking, this is looking like game. Over 20,000 lead in XP and over, what is that, 18,000 gold. And uh, Team Daedalus not, opting to not throw out the GG in game one quite yet, but uh, I feel like <laughs> I feel like they know this one's pretty much over. They're just having a little casual conversation in the game. And, you know, it, it's going to be quite difficult for them to be able to come back from anything. Juggernaut sitting at over 15k in net worth, along with the Co-op. <laughs> I mean, the bottom four heroes are just heroes you do not want to see in no farm at all. That, that's a Gyro at 5k, avoid it just below five necro as they're really their lonely support because abaddon wasn't being able to do anything this game unfortunately he's so tanky but you know didn't manage to really pick up any items here just a really early game sustain items but didn't get them until you know near around 20 25 minutes and it's it's unfortunate to see because an abaddon can definitely rush a game oh they do find caesar here and this is most likely going to be a kill triple b throwing out the alt gyro coming in and oh no sinister coming in from the back Throws off the Sonic Wave, and Ghost using the ult. I don't think they're going to want to chase down these kills anymore, but 
They have to play really safe here. And bad at kill me just time walks out. He does not want to be part of any sort of fight. He still has no farm. And MKB coming out from the Juggernaut. And that's that's going to be difficult for sure to be up against. That's, that's the Sanjin Yasha completed. That's an MKB with the Mask of Madness. I mean, he's half race car, half dominant Juggernaut. Like... It's going to be so difficult. He didn't even bother to pick up an Aghanim Scepter, so doesn't even need the ult. He's just going to be able to chase down kills left, right, and center. <laughs> and he's going to continue to push bottom here as top is just going to be pushed in by Quap as well as Kiko. And, you know, Calldown being thrown out for Gyro just as kind of a delay, but they do manage to get the tower, and it is Quap picking up the last hit, so even more gold going their way. And it's it's been really great to see just how much Welfare has kind of honed in their skills, really getting perfect pickoffs and... They took control of that game so early. I think it was 11 and 0 until they, or maybe it was seven. Even still, it was. They've really taken control of this game in in the early and and now it's just it's paid off for them so much. And there's no way that they're going to be able to come back here. And godlike streak for Void off in the off in bottom lane, and they're going to chase down Laser Phaser here, and does manage to get off a missile on Geo, but he's going to be dead nonetheless. Kiko throwing out the skewer, does get a dominating streak, and oh god, it's. It's over. Uh, Jugs is off pushing by himself. And this is Ghost, his last kind of little hurrah. I'm going to step up against Juggernaut. Going to try and survive. And there goes his ult. And this is going to be a dead ghost. Just look how much damage is coming out. That MKB is a great pickoff. Getting a couple of mini bashes. And just being able to get chased down with that maim coming up from Sanjin It's It's so difficult. I mean, he could solo the rest of this game. And this is going to be a dead Spirit Breaker as well. Sounds are picking up yet another kill. That's 28 intelligence stacked on top of him. I mean, look at the amount of <laughs> mana. I mean, he's, he's, he can really do anything right now. He's already going for the Scythe of Vice. Doesn't even need it, obviously. Has picked up the Fire Force Staff as well. And these supports have just been great. Really, really big credit coming to these supports. And, uh, yeah, Caesar really just taking over this game for them. Kiko throwing out some great RPs. Great RPs in the team fight. It was... I think he landed a couple three-man RPs. Definitely a lot of two-mans. And that really controlled the fight. Taking out the Gyro early. As well as the Spirit Breaker. And, uh... Yeah, this is gonna be another Rax cleaned up. And that'll be Mega Creeps. Still no GG coming up from Daedalus. And... You know, it's, it's unfortunate. They had some great picks for sure. I, it's a lot of core. And if they can make it to the late game, that... That's for sure a win. It, it's just so difficult to go up that kind of sustained tank as well as a great team fight. But it's just too little too late. There's no way they're going to be able to farm this. Void just can't get anything done. Magnus grabs, a, <laughs> grabs the refresher. Finally goes down to the Necrophos alt. But Jugs is going to jump on two. Gets a double kill. And Laser Phase is going to go down to the Silencer two. Triple B coming right back in. Charging out. And this could be a dead Sinister. No, the Scythe of Ice coming up from C... Uh, that must have been the Quap. And that's a double kill for Caesar here. Ghost going to be out of his ult in no time at all. And yeah, that's that's game. Really dominant performance coming up from Welfare. And, you know, straight out of Season 7, they are ready to start playing this well. Game opener, and they... Just a dominant performance from Welfare. Really great to see. Uh, picks that we've seen in the past with the Silencer. And, uh, you know, the Disruptor was really new. I hadn't seen that one before. And it worked out great. 26 assists on Geo. Uh, oh my goodness. Like, they, they played that to a T. There's a couple things that they, you know, they couldn't have got maybe a couple wards to dodge a couple Spirit Breaker ganks. But that's a Spirit Breaker. It's just what he does. So, I mean, really a real well-rounded play from Welfare. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Team Daedalus does in Game 2 here coming up next. Uh, they're going to need some sort of response here because it just did not work out for them in Game 1. Stay tuned, everybody, on Twitch. And... You know, thanks for supporting us and watching. Game 2 will be up shortly.